Hello there, welcome to this OCR J276 GCSE Computer Science video where we're looking at computational logic. We can see there what we are looking at today, we're doing some really geeky, logic-y, mathsy stuff. There's the learning outcomes for what we're looking at today, so you can see the pitch. Let's get going. So you guys need to remember that data is represented in binary in a computer system because the two possible values can be one or zero. Because we have got Mr. or Mrs. CPU sat inside of a computer, with different things going on inside the registers and inside the program counters. All it accepts is a one or a zero. All it will give out is a one or a zero because it represents the electrical current. So what this means is you can't have an electrical current of two because it's either on or it is off. And we can do some really complicated pieces of maths using things called logic gates. With logic gates, they have inputs coming in and then outputs coming out. We've got AND gates and OR gates, which are the top two, which have got two inputs, one output, two inputs, one output, and then a NOT gate with one input and one output. How these are measured is they have numbers associated to them, which are the values of the gate, the state of whether there is it. So we've got the states, if it is one, it means there's an electrical current. If it's zero, there's not an electrical current. But we refer to these as states, on or off, ones and zeros. So with numbers, they can come in. So if we've got zero and one on an AND gate, that'll give us a zero. A one and a zero will give us a one. A one and a zero. Don't worry about the logic behind these. You'll see them in a second. But the main thing to take from this slide is we've got an AND gate here. Sorry, that's my bread maker going off again. We've got an AND gate here. And it looks like a capital D. So that's an easy way to remember the AND gate. We've got an OR gate. And this section here looks like this part of the word OR. And then we've got a NOT gate, which has got the own, which is the only one with a triangle in it. So that's what the NOT gate looks like. The thing you do need to remember are the truth tables. And what these are sometimes referred to as logic tables as well, tells you what is coming in. So remember, we have got AND gates, we have got OR gates, and then we have got NOT gates. Sorry if that spike up there, that's just my graphics tablet. So what we're going to do is label these up. The inputs are going to be A and B, and the output is going to be Q. So if we're thinking about for an AND gate, we can have A and B coming out, coming into it, which is going to give us an overall of a Q. So the main things to remember is this. If A and B are both 1, Q is going to be worth 1. However, if either of them have not got a 1, then the resultant Q is going to be 0. So with an AND gate, the only way to have a state of 1 afterwards is by having them both coming in. We've got an OR gate, which again has got two inputs, A, B, and an output Q. And again, if we have one or one coming in, Q is a one. If we have zero or one coming in, we'll still get one. If we've got one or zero coming in, we'll have a one. But if we've got zero or zero, that's going to give us a zero overall. So an AND gate, they both need to be one to result in one. With an OR gate, if one of the gates is set to one, we'll get a one. With a NOT gate, which has only got the one input and one output, what that does is to flip it over. So we've got a one coming in, we're going to have a zero coming out. If we've got a zero coming in, we're going to have a one coming out. So these are three pieces of logic that you need to be know and that you need to be happy with. Because with an AND gate, we've got one. If we've got both ones, we'll have an end result of a one. With an OR gate, if we've got a one anywhere, we'll come out with a one. And with a NOT gate, it flips over, it reverses what's happening with the logic. What we can do is we can then represent these alongside their diagrams. So again, we've got A, B, and Q. 
So if we've got 0 and 1 here, this of course is then going to result us to, insert dramatic pause here, 0, because this is an AND gate. So they both need to be set to 1. If I had another gate here, and this is 1 and this is 1, again, this is another AND gate, because they're both 1, that's going to be, dramatic pause, 1. So we're going to call that one R. And then what we can do, which we're going to look at again in a second, is we're going to link these up to an OR gate. And we've got 0 or 1, just bring them back over. And because there's an OR gate, what's that going to be? Dramatic pause, 1. Fantastic. And that is creating a two-level logic diagram. We're going to look at that in a second. So what I want you to make sure you're happy with is what AND, OR, and NOT gates are and what the truth tables are for AND, OR, and NOT gates. Give the video a quick pause and then we're going to move on. So what we looked at previously was a two-level log logic diagram. So we're going to draw another one here. So what we've got here is we've got A, B. We'll put in C here and Q. And we put that C in just so we can see what's happening with the data. So if we're saying that A equals 1 and B equals 1, we want to work out what Q is. So if we're saying that that is 1 and that is 1, A is still 1, still 1, still 1, still 1. We've got a NOT gate here. So what happens? It flips over. So then C is equal to 0. 1 is still 1. We've hit this OR gate. Is it 1 or 0? It's going to result in 1. So then Q is equal to 1. And that's all it is. You can create level, as many le lo level logic diagrams as you want. The landing gear, for example, on a Boeing 747 use logic diagrams to begin with to plan out how they're going to have the circuitry, how it's going to work. So level, uh, two level long logic diagrams are really important. They can go as, into as much detail as is required, as is needed by the problem. So what I want you to do, make sure you're happy with combining multiple level logic gates and thinking about the logic that we have seen here try creating a truth table which has got A, B and C on it which will then give us our resultant of Q. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope you had some fun and I shall see you later on. See you later.